So we're looking at Act 1 of The Crucible and looking at how that relates to belonging, um, our area of study. So the beginning, we find out that the young women have been caught dancing in the woods by Reverend Paris. Um, they're already outcasts of the Salem society because they are young girls and they are dancing. Uh, we remember from the beginning of Act 1 in that essay that Miller writes, he talks about uh, how children are expected to, you know, keep their eyes to the floor and only speak when spoken to. Well, female children are even lower in the hierarchy than male children. Um, so they have no power. They already don't really quite belong to the society. And dancing means they're breaking God's strict law. So young girls aren't allowed to dance. Uh, people aren't allowed to dance at all in this theocracy. And they're breaking that law. And we remember that a theocracy means a uh, state run on religious law, which is where they, uh, where what Salem is. Salem is a theocracy. So they don't belong because they're not following the very strict rules of Salem and, and the rules of belonging to this group. So what I want you to do, I want you to read page 25 to 27 in your play text. I want, to write, I want you to write down what's happened, what's actually happened in the woods. Not what they tell people has happened, but what has actually happened? What have they actually done in the woods? I also want you to answer these questions. So I want you to figure out why does Abigail insist that they say all they were doing was dancing? Why, why does she want them to say that they were just dancing? And what is the central concern about being caught in the woods engaging in illegal activities? Why do they care? What, what, what does it matter so much? What could happen? What's the consequences of not belonging in this way? Okay, so then we need to look at um, the affair between John Proctor and Abigail. So it's, it's Abigail's failed attempt to belong. Okay, she's trying to belong to the adult world when she's, she's actually a child. So the only way for an adult woman to belong in Salem is to be somebody's wife. So she's sought that belonging to a relationship with Proctor as her way of belonging. So for Abigail, there's a difference between public and private spaces. So in private, Abigail is a woman. She's a woman with John Proctor um, having a sexual affair with him. And that's what she wants to belong to. She wants to belong to being a woman. She's 17 years old. Uh, she wants to belong to John. But in public, she has to, she's a child. And we see repeatedly throughout the play that people address her as child. Um, and she belongs to Paris, who is her uncle and her guardian, who she does not want to belong to. She wants to belong to John Proctor and be taken seriously as a woman. So for Proctor, the affair makes him the word lecher, which is a um, very derogatory term for a man who has an affair, especially with a young woman. Uh, and he's broken those theocratic laws that we were talking about, the girls breaking before. So he's broken those laws of marriage. Um, and so he no longer belongs to the th theocracy in his own mind. And what we see with Proctor is it's all about... Um, his mind and his guilt about breaking that he not just the law of God but more for him it's about breaking um the relationship he has with his wife so it, for him he, his primary concern is belonging to his marriage whereas uh Abigail wants to belong to their relationship as well so we can see the conflict emerging already and Proctor can no longer belong in Salem society because he won't let himself anymore, even though uh, at this moment uh, no one in the society knows what he's done. So I want you to look at these quotes and I want you to write down, please, what each of them tells us about belonging in Salem. So the first one, when Abigail is talking about Elizabeth Proctor, she says, she blackening my name in the village. She is telling lies about me. She is a cold, sniveling woman, woman and you bend to her. And it's on page 30 and she's talking to John about uh, his wife, his own wife. And saying that, you know, she's saying quite horrible things. I want you to look at the techniques being used here. Look at the repetition of the word she as this other. That's the representation of someone being other. The exclamation mark to show the panic and the chaos. And the whole way through this play, we're seeing this acceleration of tension. Well, these exclamation marks are part of it. She is a cold, sniveling woman. So we've got this temperature imagery of cold here. And sniveling is like sickly. So we're looking at this image of this, of this woman of Elizabeth. So I want you to tell me what it says about belonging.
The other thing she says is, I look for John Proctor that took me from my sleep and put knowledge in my heart. I never knew what pretense Salem was. I never knew the lying lessons I was taught by all these Christian women and their covenanted men. And that's also on page 30. So here she's giving a bit more detail about um, their affair. She, she feels that she has now gained knowledge, which is something that young girls are not supposed to have in this society. And took me from my sleep. It makes it quite obvious to us um, what has happened. But also she says, uh, I never knew what pretense Salem was. Now, pretense means um, something that is presented, but it's a lie. It's, um, it's what you're trying to present to people, an image, a falsity. So she's talking about um, the lying lessons she's being taught by Christian women and their covenanted men. So they've been telling her the way that she should live. They've been telling her how to belong to Salem, but she never realized what rubbish it was. But that's also going to become important, that line. I never knew what pretense Salem was because it does become that pretense where um, they are absolutely taken by rubbish and it does become a pretense. So I also want you to read, please, page 45 to 50. I want you to write down who is accused first and I want you to think about why. I want you to think about why that person is accused first and um, what that might say about belonging. I also want you to tell me who first suggests Sarah Good and Goody Osborne as witches. I want you to list all the people that are accused of witchcraft there and I want you to uh, tell me how Hale responds to the accusations and what that says about his own understanding of belonging as well. So then we need to look at Abigail and her motivation. So after making her accusations against other women in the village, Abigail starts to gain this power. And she's no longer excluded from her society. She's been accepted by Reverend Hale and increasingly by others. So what she said is being accepted by everybody and taken as uh, absolute gospel. Excuse the religious imagery and pun there. Um, so she's seeking power in this hierarchical society. We remember that she's been at the bottom of it. And not only is she at the bottom of it, but she's frustrated by it. She's frustrated by the fact that she cannot belong as a woman. She cannot belong to John Proctor. And she wants to take power and seize an opportunity. She first uses it. Um, she doesn't seek the opportunity out. It presents itself to her. She's asked and when she uh, does accuse people, she starts to gain this power. But also what Abigail does here is she changes the rules of belonging to the group. So someone who had no power is now able to change the whole rules in belonging to the group and also start her own group, which is the most powerful. Um, and we see how she uh, plays with the other girls later on. And what I want us to look at is how Miller has presented the idea of belonging in Act 1 of the Crucible. So I've already given you a point. So your point is going to be in Act 1, Miller suggests that belonging in Salem requires conformity of all members of the community. If someone does not conform to the strict rules, then they are seen as an outcast. So you would probably want to look at those two characters in particular and also how that's affecting them in terms of the panic and their fear. So you might say something about that in your explanation. Um... And then, obviously, you always must have a technique, please, and analyze it. And then I want you to finish with a link. Therefore, it can be seen that Miller suggests that in order to belong in a society like Salem, they must follow the code of conduct set up by the church. Um, if you could have this done by Thursday, that would be fantastic.